वेलकम टू एग्री इकोनॉमिक्स एंड एक्सटेंशन बाय अनुकृति सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल दिस इज अ चैनल वेर आई बी पोस्टिंग लेक्चर वीडियोस ऑन एग्रीकल्चर इकोनॉमिक्स एंड एक्सटेंशन सो लेट्स बिगिन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो इज अ डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑन वेल्थ वेलफेयर स्कार सिटी एंड ग्रोथ डेफिनेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एंड आई ऑल्सो बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द डिविजन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मॉडर्न एंड ट्रेडिशनल अप्रोच सो लेट्स बिगिन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वाई वी स्टडी इकोनॉमिक्स Uh, we study economics to understand the world around us since we all know that we have scarce resources like we don't have unlimited resources right the resources are scarce and our needs are unlimited so to meet these unlimited needs with these limited resources is what economics is all about it help us to enable the business market government and policies etc so this is why we study economics basically now uh, let's look at the word economics or uh, where it's derived from so economics is derived from greek word okeonomikas with okeos means household and nomos means management this is very important from examination point of view because many times they ask the question like from where economics is derived so it's greek word and what's the word okeonomikas so do remember this now the first one to talk about economics was a greek philosopher aristotle aristotle was a very famous greek philosopher as you all know and he wrote a book economica and in that he mentioned that economics deals with household management so this was the first one to talk about economics then many people came and they gave, gave definition for economics like uh, the first one was uh, about wealth first was wealth definition then came welfare definition then scarcity definition then growth definition so these definitions keep kept on evolving from time to time so let's look at these definition one by one the first one is wealth definition of economics so the wealth definition of economics was given by classical economist like adam smith j s mill j b s f a walker so they made wealth as a subject matter and the center topic for economics so you might be thinking who are classical economist so the classical economist were economist who were active in the late 18th century to mid 19th century okay they produced theory of market economics they focused on economic growth and freedom so uh, they were talking about economic freedom like laissez freezy we know so uh, they were classical economist adam smith j s mill ricardo were the famous economist classical economist so uh, let's look at adam smith adam smith you must know that he is father of economics father of microeconomics and also father of modern economics many times uh, people know that he is father of economics but they don't know that he is father of modern economics and also microeconomics so adam smith this is adam smith Uh, adam smith wrote a book in 1776 which is entitled as an inquiry into nature and causes of wealth of nations which is commonly uh, called wealth of nations and in that he defined economics as uh, inquiry into nature and cause of wealth of nations so he is focusing on wealth so this is his book now j s mill with uh, another classical economist he defined economics as practical science of production and distribution of wealth here also he is talking about uh, production and distribution of wealth so this was wealth definition but came criticism carolil was someone who criticized e- economics and he called economics as dismal science why he called it dismal science dismal means gloomy so he labeled it because uh, the classical economists were talking about assumptions that all people are equal and all should have equal liberty so carol didn't agree with this he believed that emancipation or say freedom of from slavery is not good for economy it will lead um, us to depend more on market forces of supply and demand in short we can say that he was against uh the people who were talking about uh freedom and were against slavery so in short we can say he called dismal science because he was not supporting the idea of ending slavery so he called it dismal science because of that i hope you understood it okay so let's move forward now let's look at welfare definition of economics alfred marshall p who canon were the economist who gave Uh, welfare definition of economics and they shifted the focus from wealth to man they said that man is the primary subject matter and wealth is the secondary 
So Alfred Marshall wrote a book called Principles of Economics, which is a very famous book. It was published in the year 1890. So this is Alfred Marshall and this is his book. So do remember that who wrote Principle of Economics? It was Alfred Marshall. So Alfred Marshall defined economics as a study of mankind in ordinary business of life. It examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with attainment and with the use of material requisite of well-being. In short, it means that economics deals with fulfilling uh, attaining well-being by using material objects in day-to-day -day life. So this was his definition in short. This definition received acceptance by a number of economists. However, the idea was condemned by Lionel Robbins. So Lionel Robbins was another economist and he disagreed with Marshall on the terms that first he said that economics uh, was treated as social science by Marshall. But according to Robbins, it's not social science, it's human science because it is human who face economic problems. So it is human science. Second, he said that um, uh, Marshall only took material requisites of well-being, but we also need non-material activities to uh, for our well-being so both are important both material and non-material things then the third point on which he was uh, not in the line with uh, marshall he said that that marshall only took uh, ordinary business of life whereas human life also contain extraordinary businesses like famine and war are extraordinary business of life so marshall didn't consider this so that's why robin was against his definition now, in short, we can say what is the difference between Marshall definition of economics and Lionel Robbins. So, Marshall said that economics is a social science. Robbins said it's a human science. Alfred Marshall said that only material activities was taken into his definition. And while Lionel Robbins, he took both material and non-material activities. Uh, Alfred Marshall talked about only ordinary business of life, whereas Lionel Robbins talked about both ordinary and extraordinary business of life, that is war for minds. Then Alfred Marshall said that economics is a normative science, whereas Lionel Robbins said it's a positive science. So uh, what is normative and positive science? Let's look at the difference between them. So normative science is what ought to be. मतलब क्या सही है मतलब क्या होना चाहिए and positive science is what is क्या है okay so normative uh, talks about what is the right situation and what is the wrong situation uh, what is uh, right and what is wrong मतलब in short it's on ethical values okay and positive science is what is the situation it doesn't deal with what is right what is wrong it deals that how the thing is it's based on fact uh, now normative science tells us how to solve a problem like what is the perfect way or the correct way to solve a problem whereas positive science tells uh, how the problem is solved okay so this is the difference between normative and positive science and the difference between Alfred Marshall's definition of economics and Lionel Robin okay so let's move on now comes scarcity definition of economics Lionel Robbins uh, put forth the following definition based on scarcity concept. So this is Leonel Robbins. Uh, economics is a science which study human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses according to Robbins. This was a definition. So in this definition, what does end means? End means human wants and means represent resources. So resources are numerous and also resources have alternative use like take example, take for example water. Water is used for bathing purpose, cleaning purpose also, and it is also used for drinking purpose. So, therefore, resources have numerous alternative uses. So, in this definition, he's uh, this is somewhat practical. This is somewhat practical like we have unlimited wants, but we prioritize our wants and use the resource which is available to us accordingly to the needs and priority. So Robin's definition is superior to wealth and welfare definition. Obviously, we can see uh, it's more practical. But some limitations are there in his definition. Like he just talked about scarcity as a problem. But when we see abundance also give rise to problems. Sometimes when resources are abundant, then also problem arises. Second, he treats economics as a positive science as we discussed earlier. And he did not touch normative aspect of economics. And the third was... 
the growth concept of economic economy was absent in his definition so this was the uh, limitation now comes growth definition of economics so this is paul samuelson paul samuelson was the first american to get a nobel prize in economic sciences okay uh, he received a nobel prize in economic sciences in 1970 his definition is uh, lengthy but if we simplify it is uh, easy to understand so his definition is economics is a study of how men and society choose with or without money to employ scarce productive resources which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in future among various people and group of society so in simple terms he wanted to say that economics is study of human choices okay how we uh, choose among the resources and the alternative uses to produce a commodity and then after production of commodity we decide how to distribute the consumption like uh, how much commodity we should use now and how much to be saved for the future so this was growth definition of uh, economics given by paul samuelson okay so these were the four uh, bases of definition by different different economists from time to time we started with adam smith then we move to uh, alfred marshall then leonard robbins then comes paul samuelson and paul samuelson definition was a uh, most precise and perfect definition of economics now let's move on to our second topic that is division of economics so uh, traditionally economics was divided into four groups first consumption third production then comes exchange and the fourth one is distribution so let's look at these one by one first is consumption consumption is also called distribution of utility so utility is what utility is want satisfying power of a good so uh, when we use something we destroy its utility and whenever a good is produced it will be consu consumed immediately or sometime in future so this was this is consumption so the part of economics which deals with consumption then comes production production means creation of utility or adding utility to a good so uh, whenever we produce something it is transformed into another form and it creates more utility in fact uh, it is creation of utility then comes exchange exchange leads to increase in welfare so the word exchange of goods implies transfer of good from one person to another the exchange of good obviously will lead to lead to increase in welfare when we exchange goods among people then it increase welfare and it create higher utility for goods and services and the fourth one let's move on to the fourth one that is distribution distribution is sharing wealth among agents of product it refers to sharing of wealth produced by the community among the agents of production a uh, proper distribution of wealth and resources leads to growth and economic welfare of the nation so remember uh, how how is economics divided traditionally into four groups and also remember that consumption is called destruction of utility production is creation of utility exchanges uh, leading to increase in welfare and third uh, fourth one is distribution sharing of wealth among different agents of product so this was tradition now let's look at the modern approach of economic division uh, so ragnar frisch was uh, an economist and he coined the term micro and macroeconomics in 1933 and he divided economics into two branches microeconomics and macroeconomics so ma microeconomics is derived from a greek word micros meaning small it is also known as price theory because it focuses on price det uh, determination now microeconomics is fundamentally dealing with individual economic unit such as it deals with consumer resource owners business firms it does not deal with an industry it deals with business firm small units okay it is considered with flow of goods and services from business firm to consumer and it deals on unit level so microeconomic 
theories cover theory of consumer behavior theory of value product pricing which is also called production factor pricing which is also called distribution and theory of economic welfare microeconomics is somewhat abstract in nature because we cannot apply it real world economic activities like because uh in economic unit individual economic unit doesn't exist when we talk about overall economic activity in the world so we never talk about a business firm we talk about an industry so microeconomics is therefore an abstract idea now comes macroeconomics macroeconomics uh is derived from greek word macros meaning large macroeconomics otherwise is called income theory now macroeconomics treats economic system as a whole rather than taking individual unit as we did in microeconomics macroeconomics deals with overall flow of goods and uh, resources in an economy okay so it covers theory of income and employment theory of money and prices banking theory of economic growth macro theory of distribution general equilibrium analysis and policy formation so this is what macroeconomics deals with okay so here we are done with both the topics like i discussed first various definition of economics and then division on economics on the basis of traditional and modern approach so i hope this video was helpful to you okay so in next video i'll be starting microeconomics playlist i'll start with consumer behavior and then uh, move further on okay Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you found the video useful, do like, comment, share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also press the notification bell so that you don't miss any update. See you in the next video.